it's Nikki, Creative Nikki Tomei Crafts. Today I would like to teach you how to make this awesome spiral rope. You can make it as thick or as thin as you want, as long as you like. It is very nice and stretchable, which is kind of really cool. And it pretty much goes back into its original position. You can stuff it if you like, um, but if it's very thin it might be hard to stuff it. But you do have a hole so we can put stuff in there. Although when you stretch it, you might see it coming out. So be careful on that. So um, it is really neat and you can kind of twist it. It's very, very cool. Now, it is a little tricky to do. It is a little tricky to understand. So this is probably something you uh, want to figure out if you're not very much a beginner. So let me explain you a few things before I actually show you how to make this. Now, I know that sounds a little tedious and you don't probably don't like listening to me talk first, but this is kind of important because you're actually putting the stitch in a totally different position than you normally would. So bear with me and give, let me give you guys um, a little lesson real quick on how to do it and where stitches are. So this makes a lot more sense, I promise you. So just bear with me, okay? So I have a little drawing right here. Let me make sure that my camera is nice and focused. Okay, so, yes, okay, good. So I'm gonna use my scissors here to, for pointing purposes. Okay, so here is the front of a stitch of a single crochet, this is all single crochet. You have here the front loop and you have here the back loop. Very easy, normally everyone would know that, even if you're a beginner, because that's kind of how you learn how to crochet, right? And then you have your Vs right here. We're going to ignore the front part. We're going to use the back loop in the very first round and then afterwards we'll forget about it. This is the part that's actually very important. And this might be a little bit confusing how it's drawn, but if you actually look at your piece, how it looks like, it kind of looks like this. Of course, this is the drawing, but you get the point. This up here that I made a little bit bigger is that back loop. That's why I drew it again so it makes more sense. That little loop right underneath is also known as the third loop behind the V. Okay, that loop right there. It's a kind of circled around right underneath the back loop. Right underneath there, you're gonna see a tiny horizontal bar. If you have a very tight tension, you might not even ever notice it. It is very thin, it's very little, it's kind of really some somehow hidden behind. I'll show you in a second what I'm talking about. That is the horizontal bar, and that is that bar, or that stitch, that line, that yarn, whatever you want to call it, that actually connects one stitch from the other. Okay, so that's how the yarn gets carried around. It's that connecting stitch, pretty much. I'm going to call it a stitch because we're going to use it as a stitch. So that's the yarn that connects two stitches with each other, right? Because you're not cutting the yarn when you go to the next stitch. You're going to keep on going, right? And that is that connecting one. That is the stitch that is very important, and that's the one that's hard to see and hard to find for some people because it's not a very commonly used one. So let me kind of put it aside now and show you on an actual piece right here. I have a little tiny sample piece that um, I used for my little drawing, and so this is the front. Very familiar for most people. This is how the single crochet looks in the front, and this is how it looks like in the back. Now here are the stitches. So you have here front loop, back loop, so here's that back loop, right underneath is the third loop behind the wheel, the V, and then you have that horizontal bar right there. Okay, let me kind of get it a little bit more in focus so you can see what I'm talking about. Alright, so you have here that third loop behind the V and right underneath, right here, is that extra loop. And that's the horizontal bar I'm talking about, and it's everywhere. You see it here, you see it here. You can move it further over, you can see it right there and right there. That is the stitch that we need, and that's the important one, okay? So now, let me tell you one more important thing about this. The wrong side is on the outside, and the right side is on the inside. So the V's are actually hidden inside. You won't see them anymore. Okay, so we're actually, when we're going in this direction, you're probably going to hold it like me at some point and hold it like this and then just 
keep on stitching because we're going into the horizontal bar every time and it's just easy that way if you hold like this and keep on going you can hold like this but it's hard because it's kind of behind it you're not going over here you're not doing it from this side you're doing it from the back side there so now that you know that and I talked for five minutes about this let's get started okay so you can make a magic ring however you start doesn't really matter I like starting with a magic ring and you do as many single crochets as you like I have eight over here and then you just pull and close your loop right so it doesn't matter how many you have the more you have the thicker it is the less you have the thinner it is that's pretty much the deal and then you're gonna go in the very first round you're just gonna go into the back loop back loop only for one round make sure your stitches are loose because you need to be able to find that horizontal bar which is the one that connects to it so let me see if I go in here and go into that back loop only and pull the yarn you're gonna see that there is a horizontal bar right here you see that appearing that's the one we need later on so make sure that the very first loop here is a loose one so you have no hard time finding it so now I did one round and made it very loose so I have no hard time finding my horizontal bar and now we're going into the horizontal bar okay you kind of look in the back here and kind of look for it so the very first time you're doing this you might have a hard time okay because it's still a little tight because you just went one round where you just went into the back loop only rather than into the horizontal bar so once you located it just go ahead and go into so you're holding it like this you're turning it and then you see that horizontal bar, bar appear right there so I'm going to show it to you over here too. You turn and then it's right here. You're going to see kind of two up here. It's the right one. It's the one that is right connected to the third loop behind the wheel, uh, behind the wheel, behind the V. So here's the V, right? Here's the third loop and it connects right to that horizontal bar. Over here too, it's that horizontal bar right connecting to the stitch. Okay, and that's where you're going into. And then you just kind of keep on going. These are um, these row rounds are continues. So you're just gonna keep on going, and as far as you need, as long as you need to, as long as you need your rope to be. I just realized I went in the wrong one. Did I? No, I went in the right one. Sorry about that. Yeah, right here is the next one. So just go into that horizontal stitch. And then when you keep on going, it's going to be easier and easier as you do it. So you're just going to find it each time. So the more rounds you do, the easier it gets because you just literally see it right there. So I'm holding it like this and then I already see that bar right there. If I tilt it, it's right there. Let me see if it's in focus right there. I tilt it, it's right there. So if you hold it like this, for you it's horizontal. Okay. Now once you get a little further down, you're probably gonna tilt to the side like I did in a second. Um, with the with the other rope. I'll show you in a second what I mean. So I kind of put my thumb in the middle to stabilize it, and that horizontal bar is right there. Every time in front of me. So you're just gonna ignore all the other ones because the V's are literally pushed inside you don't care about them anymore you're just looking for that horizontal bar I know I'm repeating myself but you won't understand what I'm talking about until you start trying it so get your yarn and just try it's very easy once you get the hang of it and you understand where that horizontal bar is coming from I've watched so many videos on this when I first started learning this and I really had a hard time because people weren't explaining where it is. And then most of the time I had watched a foreign language one. They won't explain where it is. They just point to it and say, there it is. But they won't tell you what's actually coming from. What's the purpose of this yarn or this little loop? Where's it coming from? If you know where it's coming from, it makes more sense. In fact, the way I learned it, I used a permanent marker. 
I tried exactly what the video was showing. I looked for the horizontal bar, I marked it, and I frogged my piece and figured out where it's coming from. And that's how I figured out, I was like, oh my god, it's that connecting horizontal bar between the stitches. See, and now I'm already, I don't know, four or five rows down, the, down and it's so easy now. The horizontal bar, horizontal bar is every time, it's right there. It really is easier as you go along. And now let me kind of show you how it looks like. Whoa, look at that. You have these spirals up here. It is so cool. And it's stretchy. It's really, really neat. So that's kind of how it looks like. So once you kind of get down, further down like me, and you're, I don't know, you're sitting and it's on your lap or whatever. This might be harder to do because you kind of have to bend it. So I prefer to kind of tilting it to the side and then just work it in to that bar, even though now it's vertical. But it's still easy to see. And you're just making single crochets, but in a totally different area that you normally would. Might seem awkward in the beginning, but it's so worth it. And it, you get used to it so easily. So just keep on going and then creating your single crochets into that bar. So as you can see right here, I see it every time. It's right there. It's very obvious. Make sure your stitches are loose. Otherwise you have a hard time, of course, because then it's kind of hidden behind. But otherwise, very easy and very nice. All right, I'm gonna stop here and show you again how this beauty looks like. Gorgeous, amazing, stretchable, all kinds of things you can do with it, whether it's for a purse, for a tail of an animal, or making letters with them. It's very neat. This could be an eye. Very cool, you can make letters with them and then connect them all and then you have children play with them. It's really, really neat. All right, I hope this video was helpful and I explained it well enough for you to understand it. If you didn't understand it, go ahead and watch again and just pick your yarn up and your hook and try as I do it in front of you. And then try it again if it doesn't work out. And otherwise, send me a message and I'll try again and explain it to you in a different way. I have the written and photo tutorial on my website, so be sure to check that out as well. That might help in the long way because I have some uh, pictures there that can help you understand it a little bit better if this video wasn't helpful, although I really tried my best to make sure it's clear enough. Go ahead and like, comment, and share this video. If you're on YouTube, if you're already on my website, you'll see it right there. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. The button is right below and you get notified for future videos. Thanks for watching, you guys. Bye.